Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to give you all the knowledge that I have about diving solo dungeons and share with you all my tips and tricks and also answer almost all of the questions that you guys have asked me on the Discord channel or on my YouTube channel. So let's start with uh, my character. Uh, we are on uh, Europe here, as you can see here. Uh, I, I have like nine days, nine and a half days of gameplay on Europe, which is not a lot. Let's go inside. And let's see. So this is the build that I'm using right now. And I'm using it with Wanderlust so between the dungeons and with Guardian Boots uh, when I go inside. Uh, usually on West, uh, I used to have minor war boots, but <laughs> I don't have any gathering of experience, so <laughs> I can't really afford minor war boots here. Um, what else? What else? These are my stats. I have <laughs> more PvP fame than uh, PvE because I don't really enjoy PvE. Okay. So the build is around 80k, but for sure if you buy order it, you could uh, get it for cheaper. As you can see it's 83k, but like I said, if you buy order all, all of this stuff, or even if you craft it, if you have crafting uh, specs, you could make it for less. Okay, now let's see what are my specs. Actually, let's go like this. I go eat them with people ball. So these are my specs on uh, gig boots and wanderlust and now cleric. Cleric is eighty one. I have hunter hood on eighty seven and. Tom of spells it's maxed out at 100 and now the main uh, attraction the weapon let's see my weapon is at 63 now and my fire staff is 74 that's not my f max spec and I still get a ton of kills okay now before we go into the diving part of the, the video I want to explain solo dungeons, like the, the maps it, themselves. So let's buy one of each. Because I'm sure many of you guys uh, don't really know uh, how they work. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. And a point three. Now, let's start popping them. We go to Sandrift Shore for this one. So that was a flat five. Flat five the maps. Uh, when you, we will see the, the dungeon, it will have green butterflies. Where is it? Okay, here. It's close. That's how most of the people do solo dungeons. They grab uh, MVs and they go straight to the dungeon. There it is. So see, it has green butterflies, and once we go inside, we see uh, that the mobs are enchanted, like this, we click the mob, and we see this little sword with 16% increase. This is how we see that the uh, um, dungeon is enchanted. Now, let's go back to the portal, because we don't want to run between all the maps here and pop another one. I'm sure most of you know all these things, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, even the new players uh, get a good uh, understanding about maps and how they work. Usually they, uh, uh, they spawn in uh, the same uh, map or in the, the one next to it. 
So that's why we popped them in the portal, so we could be only one map away from the uh, from the dungeon. Oh, this is a bit far away. We've arrived at the dungeon, and as you can see, the butterflies are blue. Let's go inside, and we'll see the enchantment of the mobs. As you can see, it's 36 percent. First one was 16, now it's 36. Let's go back to the city now. And let's pop the point two. Okay, this one goes, takes us to Farshore Bay. Let's get it. You can press shift n so you can see the the map translucent in this video we will uh, i will also share uh, my tips and tricks and how to do it easier and how you can catch the the, the players uh, easier and things that you could avoid not to die that often let's say this one will have uh, it's a point two and it will have purple blood butterflies as you can see purple blood butterflies we go in and let's see the enchantment the mob is enchanted with 58 percent Now let's go back outside and pop the last one, the point three. What you also need to understand is that uh, enchanted maps can be spawned by players and SBI also. Like the game will spawn enchanted maps, but the maps uh, in spawned by the game, they, re they will uh, always be in the same tier as the map itself. So like in a tier 5 map, there will always be enchanted tier 5 dungeons. You won't see uh, spawned by the game a uh, tier 8 map in a tier 5 zone. That's always, always spawned by a player. And not by, uh, not by the game. So when you see like a 5-1 or a flat, uh, flat uh, 5 uh, with butterflies, you go inside and you see and it's enchanted and it's a tier 5 most probably that's a system spawned dungeon and you can just leave because people usually don't really do tier 5 maps <coughs> now let's go to the last uh, map that we opened it was a point 3 5.3 this one will have uh, th this one it will be legendary it will have uh, gold butterflies as you can see gold butterflies let's see the enchantment Okay, so the mobs are enchanted with 84%. Right now we are uh, right after the maintenance. And this is a good uh, time to start uh, um, searching for dungeons. So you can uh, create a route with 5 to 10 dungeons. And just uh, run on the same route every time. I'll try to do the same here. Uh, I mean, we had there three dungeons, one next to the other. Maybe we can find more. Let's try it here. All the uh, tier 5 maps around the portal uh, are good for uh, divers. Because usually people will uh, open the maps in the portal and there's a chance for the, the maps to spawn on those maps. I know, I'm seeing maps way too many times but that's the reality 
So just run around and where you can see where you will see a wisp or a corrupted dungeon or a hell gate or a solo dungeon they all share the same spot so here the if we reset this wisp there's a chance for a solo dungeon to pop to spawn also what you need to remember is that after each maintenance the spawn uh, points will reset and they will move to another location so each day there will be another route to make try to find the uh, five to ten dungeons in a circle or a square and just run around that same circle continuously and dive every dungeon that you see uh, at first um, you'll just reset to uh, like system maps but after a while mm, solo dungeons will start appearing on that map like in which uh, spawned by players we have like six seven so far now we go in this one and as you can see we found people but I cannot kill both of them I'll try to go out maybe I can switch back to wall maybe with wall I have a chance but we have to wait for the cooldowns this is a very good example. I mean, you've seen I only searched three dungeons and I found someone inside. Let's eat the food, wait for the bubble. I'm sure I will not uh, win this fight, but I will kill at least one of them, I hope. 10 seconds and we go in. This is, this is a very good example. In Europe, most of the players, they, they go in uh, to do solo dungeons in, in a party. That's my experience. <laughs> and since I'm not full spec, I'm sure I'm not be oh, they went inside. Okay. I think that's uh, good for me. Let's see. We need to try to hit both of them with uh, my E. Okay, we use this now. Yeah, I died. But we killed the juicier one. We killed the dagger. And a 5.2 fire staff killed me. I'm happy with that result. It's not that bad. Okay, let's go back to the video and uh, to go back to the city and continue the video so that's how i do it i find i find i find a route a good route with five to ten dungeons and just walk on that route over and over and every time i see a dungeon i just dive it you need to remember to reset all the wisps and uh, solo dungeons on that route so you can keep the, sp the spawn uh, uh, sp points empty so when someone pops a map in the city there's a big chance it will spawn on your route uh, if you want to make it easier on yourself just make a print screen on the for the whole map and just mark where the dungeons uh, Ha where the spots are it would be easier for you to create a route like a circle or a square or something just to remember uh, where to walk try not to make the circle very big because uh, you want to ha to cover all the spots in the 90 seconds because after 90 seconds the the dungeons will uh, disappear let's see we said this one As a tip, what I usually do when I find uh, way too many corrupteds on my route, because sometimes after a while you reset the wisp and the solo dungeons, and sometimes corrupted like this one will spawn on my map. What I usually do, I have a cheap uh, loadout. Where is it? Uh, corrupted reset. This one. 
So tier 5 corrupted, that gives me 900 IP. It's around 30k and I just go inside the corrupted and just suicide inside. So it uses the corrupted and it, it uh, frees the spot for uh, a dungeon to spawn in, in its place. You, you usually want to hit like 10 dungeons on your route just to make sure you have uh, enough spots where you can also have like one or two corrupted dungeons just in case. So how can you see if uh, a dungeon I is uh, enchanted? I if it had no butterflies outside, but you go in and click on the first mobs, and if the mobs are enchanted, that then you know that there w there is inside someone inside that dungeon, and the dungeon being empowered I or enchanted, empowered, enchanted, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it means someone is inside and they they went in and they didn't wait the 90 seconds at the gate. Sometimes they do that, they, they have big confidence in them. Or maybe there's multiple of them and it's not only one guy. And they are sure that they will kill whoever comes in. <coughs> also when you go inside the dungeon and you find someone at the gate waiting for the 90 seconds, don't fully start engaging on them. You want to auto-attack them to make them think we don't have a lot of power. And also if you <laughs> want to just tease them, call them noobs or telling them to get out or just something to annoy them. And I know that they will, call, they, they will say that you are toxic and whatnot, but that makes them uh, hit you, take the fight with you. And that's a good trick that I'm using to make people hit me. And take the fight with me. I'm trying to find some dungeons. I'm not sure I will have the same luck again. Also, if uh, you see the map is enchanted, nobody at the gate. With my build, what I do, I change to Wanderlust and to wall of flames and I go inside after them. Most of the times people will skip the first level and go to the second level and start uh, killing everything on the second level. Uh, and having one the last you could you will be able to chase them through the mobs and that's a good uh, thing because this bit lacks any kind of mobility. And also with the wall of fire if they try to run back uh, outside uh, like to pass you you can block them between the mobs in the wall and they will take damage from the mobs another um, good tri uh, tip is let's say you go inside in a dungeon and there's somebody on the gate uh, try to find the uh, try to see if the mobs at the entrance are dead or not because usually when there's multiple they'll start someone some of them will go inside and kill the mobs and one will wait on the gate and you don't really want to take a fight where there's like three or four people inside or even two with this build you rarely can kill both of them you know so if the mobs are dead inside the, uh, the entrance of the dungeon there's probably someone inside and you could go inside and check if you see someone. What else? Okay, so I have a list of questions that I ask you guys to give it to, uh, to give for me to answer in this video. Uh, so we have uh, some questions from uh, our Discord channel. Oh, this guy is Gucci. Uh -huh. Okay, so the first question <coughs> is which map do you usually dive on? And what are the best maps to dive near the portals? So I don't actually have a preferred map because after each maintenance, the spawn, uh, the, the, the spawn points, are look, someone just went inside. We change, we go in. And now if he doesn't fight and goes out, we can chase him because he will have no bubble. Oh, uh, ballcaster. Okay, he went out. I guess he will have time to mount because I have the cooldown. Cannot go out. Yeah. This happens sometimes. 
But as you can see, my all my route I already found two two people in dungeons in not even ten minutes. Okay, so I was saying I don't have a preferred map because after each maintenance the spawn points, the spawn spots, they change. So you just have to find a good route. Y you can check all the maps around the portal, it doesn't matter which one, because they all have the same chance to spawn maps that player open on in the portal. Another question, what time has the most people doing dungeons? Um, I would say it's the prime time, always, but it's not necessarily the most profitable one. I usually tend to find uh, juicier players in solo dungeons be before the maintenance, but in prime time there's for sure more people doing dungeons, but that means that sometimes you'll find 2-3 people in the same dungeon, because there will be more people logged in, so they will come with friends doing to do one solo dungeon, and that's the truth. It depends of RNG and who, what player gets the dungeon on your route and how good he is. It's not something that you can, I don't know, calculate or something like that. Uh, how do you determine if someone went in? Another question. So, like I said, uh, if, let's say, I, I walked through this spot and there was a dungeon with butterflies, I just walk through screens away and uh, when I come back if the butterflies are gone that means someone went in if let's say I find a dungeon I, du I go inside and I see it has butter uh, it has the mobs uh, enchanted then I know that someone went in this dungeon and probably skipped few mobs or maybe the whole first level Another question, how do you decide whether or not to take the fight? For me, it's easy. I have enough silver uh, and the build is cheap enough that I take all the fights. Doesn't matter if I win or lose. For me, because let's say he makes some, he's way good cheer than me. Let's say he's a 6-3, 7-3 or whatever. But if he does one or two mistakes, he's dead. So that's why I... I want to try all the fights. I don't want to regret running from a fight. The build is cheap and uh, the the chance of uh, survivability is pretty big with this build. Uh, let's say if there's three people inside, maybe I don't take the fight because I think I, uh, I, I'm i sure I will die, but I, I'm i not sure I can kill at least one. Because if I can kill at least one, it's it's fine for me. Uh, he he ate out immediately. I cannot chase him. I have cooldown, so I cannot chase. So we'll wait here for a bit. This is a tier eight flat eight. See, it's 16 percent. This is a flat eight map. Uh, what you uh, another trip? What uh, another uh, tip? What you want to do against uh, battle axes? Uh, you want to switch uh, to Wall of Flames. Uh, mostly all of the melee weapons is good to have Wall of, flame, wall of Flames. Uh, except maybe Spears, because Spears is like mid-range. It's not really a melee. But uh, any kind of gloves, uh, double-bladed daggers, uh, you want to have the the wall. If it's a range weapon, you go with flame blast. And uh, for ball caster, I usually go with fire wave just to interrupt that E. Let's see the food. Why not? He's not coming back. I usually wait for them uh, to see if they come back. If it's a point one, point two map, sometimes I mean most of the times they come back. But if it's a flat 8, it, the, ma the map is cheap enough so they can just leave. They don't risk their build. Okay, another question. Do you dive every single dungeon you come across? How do you decide which one to enter? Like I said, create the route, 5 to 10 dungeons, dungeon spots, and just dive them every time. Don't just run around on the whole map 
uh, going in random random dungeons because the the chances of finding people that way are are, are very slim next to none the chances to find a random person in a random dungeon but keeping the same route and dungeon diving the same dungeons over and over and over you will find people as you can see i already found like three people in a few minutes they didn't fight but at least i found them this is a very good example of my strategy let's see another question uh, is there any way to determine which solo dungeons are spawned from a map? Do the mobs indicate this in any way? Like I said, yes. If the mobs have the little sword icon under their name, oh look, the corrupted dungeon disappeared from here, so we'll have another spot here. Uh, so the mobs have the little sword under their uh, icon, it means the, the map is it's spawned by somebody, by a system, or by a player. If it's a tier 5 and you are in a tier 5 zone, it means it's system spawned. You just you can just leave that dungeon. But if it's a let's say a tier 7, 6, 7, 8, you should probably go in the dungeon and check the second level. Most of the times there's someone inside unless someone uh, already dove them and they ran out. And it just came later and the dungeon is empty. Another question. Will T6, 7, 8 map dungeons spawn in a tier 5 zone around the portal? Will the mobs inside uh, be tier 8? Yes. From a few months ago, I don't remember exactly when, SBI decided that you don't need to go in a tier 8 map to do a tier 8 dungeon. The see there's no this is not enchanted you can just go outside so you can spawn a tier 8 map the tier 8 dungeon in a tier 8 in a tier 5 map and the mobs will be tier 8 sometimes you'll see the dungeon with butterflies and i usually go inside first and uh, when i um, dismount I'll see if I have the exclamation point and maybe that's uh, when I understand if there's someone waiting in this next to the dungeon or not. Uh, if there is nobody and there's a then that's a tier 5 map inside, the mobs are enchanted and there's a tier 5 map, uh, solo dungeon, I just leave. But if I have the exclamation point and let's say it's a tier 7, 8. I just go in first. I wait for my cooldowns. And uh, I wait for them to go inside. I typically wait the 60 seconds inside. If they don't come in, after 60 seconds, I usually go out. Because it means they, they saw me go in. They and they saw my build. And they decided not to, to take the fight with me. That's what I usually do. But I, I usually I don't wait the whole 90 seconds. So it's up to you how much time do you have on your hands. Because uh, let's say you wait 90 seconds somewhere and you miss someone else in another in, in another dungeon. Everybody's running from me, bro. Come on. It's a flat eight dungeon. Let's get go. let's go out. Yeah, he ran away. Sometimes it's good to follow them because they might be a slow loader. So even if you have a cooldown going out, they might have a slow loading screen and you can catch up to them and you will not let them mount. Let's reset this wisp. Remember this could be a solo dungeon spot. We haven't been through here. Let's see. Are there any wisps here? Yeah, look at dungeon. Let's reset this one also. Okay, so this is all my, most of my knowledge, let's say, about solo diving solo dungeons. If I missed anything, or if you have uh, more questions, please drop them below in the in the comments. I'll try to when I uh, when I'll get more questions about it. I'll try to to make a more comprehensive uh, guide, exactly like this one. 
I hope this uh, this video uh, helped you understand more on more on how to dive. And also, if you are a guy who is doing solo dungeons, I, I, I guess you get a perspective from our side, and maybe you can learn on how to escape better. Maybe I don't know. I hope not. Then I'll catch you all. Look how many people I'm finding. Dual sword is a good one for wall. Just wait for them to E on you and then you place the wall. Just auto attack. Try to get them on the... When you have wall, try to get them on the bridge so you can control the fight better. This guy is either fully AFK or he will not fight. Uh, he's just trolling me. Let's try something else. Is that he will not be able to escape? Look, we even got a kill, bo boys. <coughs> I'm telling you, having a good route will make you a ton of money. Even if you kill only for one, for twos, it's like 100k each, 50k each. I don't know. If you kill enough of them. Two days ago, I'll, I'll show you in a separate clip. I killed like 70 people in one day and I died like six, seven times. I think I made over 20 mil profit. If I remember, I, I'll just go uh, to the city uh, uh, and show you all my profits from uh, Monday through to today. It's over 50 mil. And yesterday I haven't played at all because I didn't have the co internet connection. Someone decided they w they wanted to start the construction and they broke the fiber optic. Let's see. I'll just wait for the three two minutes uh, remaining two minutes uh, of outlaw and then I'll go back to the city and I'll show you the profits. And also, I'm gonna show you at the end of the video the all my kills from yesterday. Look, see, this is the guy. I'll go inside, and he will decide if he wants to take the fight or not. He has a light crossbow. He's pretty. He has a pretty big DPS. Let's see if he wants to fight or not. It has green butterflies. That means it's a flat map. And well, let's see, it's a tier eight flat map. But I don't think he will come. What you can also do is try bait them that you are going out. And if they come in, sometimes they will auto attack you. <laughs> but they won't have any cooldowns. That could, that's a good, uh, I don't know, another tip. If he's not coming in 17 seconds, I'll just go out. Because he probably is waiting for me dismounted for me to go out. Yeah, I guess he's not coming. Yep, he ran away. Today we have uh, plenty of smart people who did not take the fight. Let's do another lap. Let's see, we have anyone else here? As you can see, I have no bubble. So the risk of me getting killed now, it's pretty big. Look, there's nobody, no mobs here. That, that means someone entered and he started clearing the mobs. Let's just go Wanderlust, Wall of Flames. And this will be a very good example of how to deal with people that started doing the dungeon. I should probably wait here because I had the uh, exclamation point when I went in. I'm just afraid I will get threatened, but hey, what can you do? It's Albion. Let's see. Do we have a good surprise with 10 people inside? <laughs> or oh, there's only one guy? Oh, there's two guys. Okay, one with the. Okay, I just put him in combat. Mm. 
Okay, we hit both of them. Hmm. Yep, I died. They played good. They kited me a lot. Okay, let's see the the loot. So here, uh, every Sunday I sell everything and every Monday I start over with the loot. So here I only keep this. Come on. Here I only keep the beef stews. And where's the gigantifies? And whatever is left here, it's only from solo dungeon. So we have like what 20 mil so far 28 mi 29 mil 30 45 mil almost 51 and almost 60 mil here i guess i, I hope i counted correctly almost 60 mil this week in four days so far because today i didn't play yesterday i didn't play so it's four days 60 mil and that for me it's a good profit with low risk i guess you can make more going uh, mists and playing playing uh, high tier gameplay but if you have uh, like me a uh, very risky connection uh, i guess you would just hate to die with a i don't know point four weapon just because of the bad connection so remember guys if you have if i missed uh, any questions or any details that you wanted to hear or if you have uh, extra questions for me drop them in the in the comments below and i would really appreciate it if you liked and subscribe this video because this will help many many people from now on uh, i will just uh, tell people to come to this video and see all the tips and tricks that i have for them here okay so we are here on albionmurder.com which is the equivalent of murder ledger for europe and here you can see one day ago, one day ago so starting from here i have around 70 kills made in one day it was a five hour equivalent of gameplay five six hours um I died six or seven times here, here, probably because I messed something up or I didn't have the correct spells, the correct W. I have most of them are 4.2, 4.1, 4.3, but we have some Gucci ones like this, or where is it? Even this guy, he had the boar. I was lucky and I got that boar. Where is it? I have uh, another one. Uh, six, uh, six, three. Look, dual swords. This one. This one was pretty juicy, also. No, don't go up. Where is it? This one, 5.3 full. Where's the cursed? There should be a cursed. Yeah, this one. So this is, a, I guess, a good example of how much profit you can make with an 80k set. Like I said, I died seven times, I think, and I killed 70 people. Even if you kill, like, people with 100k profit, that, that gives you 100k profit, it's still a lot of money. I'm not talking about the, the rare Gucci ones, you know. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, If you are, even if you are a new or a older player. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys and have a great day. Bye-bye.